Hey guys. All right, happy Friday. In our house, Friday is collard bread day for the Sabbath, Shabbat. But whether or not you celebrate Shabbat or not, you should be making collard bread at least once a month. And my recipe in the lemon bowl makes two loaves, which is perfect because you can use one loaf to eat fresh, and then you can use another loaf to make uh, French toast. Okay, so to do it, like I said, my recipe makes two loaves. So I've already cut that in half. This is the second half. And so you can see what we're headed towards. This is what I'm gonna show you guys how to do, how to braid it with six strand braid. And essentially, it's really not that hard. It takes about three minutes. And then I'll show you what to do. Now for uh, the dough, if you're not familiar, is really simple in terms of ingredients. So um, it's flour, egg, sugar, yeast, water, salt, did I say sugar, uh, and some oil or butter. So you could use either one. It's a really simple dough. You don't need like the, the starter like you need for sourdough. It doesn't have to like, you don't have to like work on that for two weeks before you can even bake it. Literally, you can make it in the morning, let the uh, dough rise double in size, and then it only takes 30 minutes to bake at 350. So you guys, let me tell you, if I'm baking collard bread, you can bake it too. It's not hard. Okay, to cut the dough into six strands, I like to start by cutting it in half. And then I take that half and cut it in thirds. Now, here's another thing, guys. This doesn't need to be perfect. I can assure you, once again, if I'm baking it, it's not one of those recipes that needs to be perfect. All right, and then what you're gonna do is take your dough and basically roll it in between your hands into long strands, almost like, you know, making six snakes. And it takes, like I said, about two minutes total to do. Doesn't need to be perfect, guys, but you wanna try to get them similar in length and, and diameter. So one down, five to go. Now you could also do a three strand braid if you would like. And I like to do the six strand braid because the recipe makes so much dough, you might as well. Okay, how do you spell the name of this bread? It's spelled Kala, C-H-A-L-L-A-H. And in the description of this live, I have the URL to the recipe on my website, but you could just Google the lemon bowl kala bread or go to the lemonbowl.com and search for kala bread. Okay, two down, four to go. And after we braid it, what we do, and you'll notice when you see kala bread at the store or the bakery, or maybe someone you know has made it in the past, it has that beautiful brown golden sheen to it. And that sheen is done with a simple egg wash that you brush on top. And the other reason why this, the egg wash is so important is it allows you to stick on some topping, some garnish. So we typically use either sesame seeds or crystallized sugar, but you could also use poppy seeds or just leave it plain. And heck, you could probably get way more creative than that. I mean, uh, like for example, the everything bagel seasoning, that would be delicious on collard bread. Now we, like to use leftovers for French toast, so I tend not to go too savory with the toppings. But like I said, you could always do one loaf savory, one loaf with like sugar on top. But again, you don't need a topping. I would, however, recommend the egg wash regardless because it helps get that beautiful brown finish look to it. Hey Valerie, how are you? Hey guys, if you're listening in, tell me where you're from. I'd love to know where you're all listening in or watching from. Hey Rich, how are you? My cousin Rich is here from Boston. Okay, so we have five strands done, one more to go. And again, if you're just tuning in, we're making collard bread. And I'm really just at the point now where I wanna show you guys how to braid the six strand braid collar. And so you have reference of what we're doing. This is what we're gonna end up with. All right. Almost done. And like I said, the goal here is just to have six pieces of dough that are somewhat even in diameter and length, but it's totally fine if they're not. Ooh, we got Tennessee in the house, Sacramento. Ooh, Windsor, Canada, right across the water. Virginia Beach, you guys are everywhere. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm taking, I love Baltimore, by the way. I'm taking the top of each strand and just connecting it. And then I basically am pinching the dough together so that it sticks as it bakes. 
Okay, so now we've got that all taken care of. And I'm gonna show you how to weave this. And if you've ever made a pie crust, it's similar like that. So you basically start with the far right and you go over and then under, and then over, under, over. And then you just repeat that again. So you go over, under, over, under, over. So again, this always reminds me of a lattice pie, pie crust, if you've ever done that. It's very similar. Here's the other thing, you guys. It doesn't matter what it looks like, it's gonna taste delicious. So don't worry about having the perfect braiding skills. Uh, literally, you could just like twist a bunch of bread pieces together. You could put it into all different shapes. It will be good regardless of how it looks. So don't get too hung up on that. And in fact, when I cut the dough in half, like this one's definitely smaller than the other loaf. Guess what? There's no, there's no right or wrong. I always say in a pandemic, there's no rules. So it's fine. You're baking bread. You've already won. All right. Uncle Michael's here. Dallas, Orlando, Baltimore. We got everyone. What's CP? What does that stand for, Cecile? Okay, so we have the bread and it is all braided. That took me about three minutes total, even while I'm gabbing away. And I'm gonna show you the next part. So first we're gonna put it on a prepared sheet, which I just have lined with a silicone baking mat so it doesn't stick. Okay, here's the fun part. We're gonna take this egg wash, which is just one egg that I've whisked up, and I'm gonna brush it on top. And like I said, this is not so much for flavor so much as it's for creating a beautiful golden brown sheen as it bakes up. And it also gives something for the garnish, the topping to adhere to. And we're gonna be using uh, some sesame seeds today. I already did another loaf with crystallized sugar, but you could also use poppy seeds or even just kosher, or excuse me, coarse salt would be really good. I like the, um, toppings because it gives a little bit of crunchy texture, which is always nice because this, this bread is really eggy and soft and squishy and fluffy. So having something crunchy kind of balances it out. Okay, that looks perfect. Now I'm gonna take my sesame seeds. I know, I knew that was gonna bug someone, but Rita, I have good news for you. No one's eating this bread but my immediate family, so it's okay. Um, Okay, I'm just sprinkling this with sesame seeds. You don't need to do too much, but it's totally okay. And then this goes in the oven for 30 minutes and it's done. It's so easy, 350. You can get the full recipe for this collard bread at thelemonbowl.com. And I really encourage you to make it at least once in your life. Once you make it, you're gonna realize how easy it is to make. And it fills your whole house with the delicious smell of bread. And it brings people together because people are gonna flock to where they smell that coming from. And it makes two loaves. So, you know, putting a little effort in on a Friday, for example, you're gonna have bread all weekend long and it freezes really well if you live alone or there's just two of you. It's also great to gift to a neighbor. So if you know someone that maybe isn't able to get to the store right now or maybe a healthcare worker, a loaf of collard bread is a great thing to leave at their doorstep. So I just, I can assure you this collard bread will bring you some happiness. So. All right, guys, thank you so much for listening and um, have a good rest of your day. I'll talk to you guys soon.